Paul wrote that in the last days, perilous times shall come. I think we're there. Pastor Billy Crone, welcome to Prophecy Watchers once again. And you're going to speak with us today about the last days. Yeah. And you have a DVD set, and I've got it here, it's called The Final Countdown, and you talk about the reasons why we're living in the last days. And you offer ten solid separate reasons why we're living in the last days. And mm-hmm. I, I don't know whether we'll have time to talk about all ten of them <laughs> in the next 30 minutes, but we're yeah. certainly going to try. Yeah. The last days, a lot of people would say, well, the la- we're not there yet. The last days maybe, maybe are in the future a little bit, but we haven't arrived there yet. What would you say? Well, I'd say that uh, you need to get equipped and get informed <laughs> of what's going on because uh, times have changed. And yeah, maybe the Christian community has been saying, granted for a uh, few decades now that uh, Jesus is coming back, and He is coming back, okay? Uh, but times have changed. Things are happening on such a rapid scale uh, that even minute passages of the Bible and Bible prophecy are coming to pass never before in the history of the church. And we're seeing the, uh, when you take a look at the events during the seven year tribulation and the technology and the geopolitical system, the religious system, What's going to happen to the planet? When you take a look at what uh, those events are during the seven-year tribulation, we're seeing for the first time in man's history. We, it isn't coming. It's already here, and it's already being put into place. The ability to pull off those events Mm -hmm. in the seven-year tribulation. Therefore, logically, how much closer then is the rapture of the church which takes place prior? That's what's different with these times. Well, that's why we call ourselves the Prophecy Watchers. Uh, We are actively watching these things unfold. Uh, A lot of people have have spoken of the Jews. Uh, They are God's timepiece. They are back in the land. That sort of started a clock ticking, and that would be reason number one, I think, that the presence of the Jewish people in the Holy Land, right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Certainly becoming a nation again, that was huge. Uh, And becoming a united nation, and becoming a nation one day, and I mean all these things are prophesied. Uh, in the Scripture. And uh, unfortunately the Bible also says that during the seven year tribulation two thirds of the Jewish people are going to be annihilated. Uh, another Jewish holocaust is coming. And so you're thinking, well you got to be kidding me. I mean that just happened in World War II not that long ago. How in the world can mankind so quickly repeat the same mistake? Mm-hmm. Well what do we see in the news today? And we certainly bring this out. One fourth, they just came out with a new uh, uh, study, one fourth of the planet holds anti-Semitism views. One fourth of the planet holds anti-Semitism views. Uh, Certain countries like Greece, 69% of the people are uh, uh, anti-Jewish mindset there. Uh, It is being repeated. If you look at even recent articles recently you're starting to see headlines like Jewish people are concerning to flee Europe again. It's getting extremely bad. Which of course why is that important? Well we know logically unfortunately that kind of uh, anti-Semitic view is going to increase again because there's going to be unfortunately another Jewish Holocaust. That's happening as we sit here. Wow. And of course this is in the news virtually every day now. Anti-Semitism is literally exploding. And of course that would be a a very big sign. Uh, We're coming to the time of the Antichrist and let's talk about the Antichrist in practical terms. A lot of people say he's alive today. Mm -hmm. They don't know who he is. I certainly don't know who he is. Uh, You think he's alive today? Oh I think uh, very well could be. Uh, And part of that too is we know that uh, during the seven year tribulation, halfway into the seven year tribulation, he is going to go up into the rebuilt Jewish temple and he's going to declare himself to be God. Uh, and uh, so then, therefore, you go, well, how close is, uh, is that event? Well, what are the Jewish people also doing at the same time? They're not just back in the land. What are they, what are they pushing for? The rebuilt of the Jewish temple. Sure. In fact, we even shared, they're actually now putting out not only uh, commercials for you to come over there. Uh, with the Temple Institute and check out their uh, how far they've got with all the vessels and the research and the mm-hmm. plans and the, you can even watch a 3D animation uh, of their the plans and and but they're also putting out commercials uh, to the Jewish people. We share one of them on there that the children are ready. Just build the temple. They are so itching to build the temple. In fact, this was wild. They are so expectant 
of the Jewish people that the temple will be built any time now and uh, that they believe that the Messiah will, will come back, um, that they are actually uh, Jewish uh, 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 real estate uh, folks are actually uh, putting in their uh, rental agreements and lease agreements what's called the Messiah Clause. Hmm. And the Jewish people, it's wild. This is how expectant they are. That they are putting in this Messiah Clause with their tenants because they don't want to be stuck uh, having to wait for them to fill out their, uh, finish out their lease or tenant if, if they're outside uh, Jerusalem. Uh, if the Messiah comes back uh, they want to have a clause to be able to negate it so they can hurry up and get back uh, to Israel in time for the Messiah's arrival. I mean just little things like that. Mm-hmm. It's like that's never been here before. In other words regarding the coming of the Messiah as something absolutely real and predictable mm-hmm. which most people don't. To most people the, the, the coming of Jesus, even to most Christians, is kind of a uh, metaphor. Yeah. You know it could happen, it might not happen. Uh, let's not be too serious about it. You yeah. know? And, and I don't think people are really that serious and all the while we see all the signs coming past us. Uh, modern technology has become almost demonic. Yeah. And you, you cover that in, in this series yeah. as well. A lot of the bizarre uh, technological developments uh, would seem aimed at enslaving humanity, making mm-hmm. uh, paving the way, if you will, for the Antichrist system. Yeah, well, and uh, certainly uh, we talk about that, mentioning with the Antichrist, you know, it talks about people worshiping his image, and this image had the ability to, you know, kill people if they didn't do what he said and worship him, et cetera, and working with the false prophet. And, and you certainly see with the technology, you got uh, with 3D holograms, you got people coming back to life, like we mentioned, we did before with Tupac. Yeah, and let's stop at 3D holograms. Yeah, oh, yeah. Producing the <clears throat> image of a person. You know, there's, yeah. a, there's a clause in Revelation that talks about the image of the beast. Yeah. And uh, the false prophet is able to sort of uh, make people believe and worship the image of the yeah. beast. Could be a 3D hologram, right? Well, absolutely. And you got some interesting things going on, on the planet right now. You you have that. Is and again, it's not coming. It's already here and already being put into place. This is what's different this time around. And the 3D hologram technology is already being put into place. They're already using it for concerts. They did that for Tupac. They did just did it for Michael Jackson. And then uh, you're seeing political leaders who the Antichrist will be, right? You're seeing political leaders, we even show the video clip of the, the leader in Turkey, and he's using a 3D holographic image to talk to the crowd. Whether it's Michael Jackson, whether it's Tupac, uh, or whether it's a, uh, um, a leader around the world, when you listen and see the reaction of the people, it's like they're worshiping them. Like it's when Michael Jackson came back from the dead, it looks like it's him, and he's dancing on stage, it looks real. Right? When this leader is making his announcement in Turkey, the people are going nuts over this image. Couple that with what's also going on with the Vatican. I'm not saying necessarily Pope Francis is the false prophet, uh, but you're looking at a global religious leader, and guess what they're using to make their announcements? They're using global 3D broadcasts. Mm. And, and, and I like what one guy had said. He says, you put all this technology together, and, and could we s- be seeing right now that the Vatican is experimenting with the actual technology that will be used to announce the Antichrist r- arrival. Well the Vatican is known to be, uh, uh, to have a welcoming attitude to our visitors from on high, oh, from, yeah. <laughs> from other galaxies. Yeah. Uh, they've actually uh, uh, developed encyclicals, position papers, mm-hmm. uh, stating that when the aliens come uh, we'll be glad to welcome them into our ranks. Well, And it's, it's a false gospel and again it's a loaded statement as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. And if you certainly had some alien deception that was going on and the hybrid issue in the Nephilim in Genesis 6, we're seeing that repeated today and the Vatican is one of the big headquarters for this. Uh, certainly with the astronomers there, uh, they're promoting basically that they're going to be our new saviors. Uh, and that we need to listen. They say that the aliens, are, they, what they're teaching is false obviously, that they are our new saviors, that they're outside the fall of man. So if they're outside the fall of man then their knowledge of God and i.e. the gospel is going to be higher than our knowledge even above the scripture. And so then when, when they show up we need to submit to what they have to say about God and things of that nature. Now that's one thing for some astronomers in the Vatican to promote this, but they have the ear of Pope Francis and we actually share a video clip on there as well uh, where he is, it's stated on record that he would be willing to baptize an alien and that when these people come we need to submit what they have to say. And that they are preparing, their words, not mine, that uh, not to set a date or anything, 
but they are preparing an announcement from the Vatican for imminent disclosure. That these mm. things are real and they're here to save us. Oh, here's another wild thing. Wow. Is they're also saying, they deny of course the, the virgin birth, and what they're saying is what was really going on with the virgin birth is that Jesus was uh, genetically uh, created from the uh, aliens. And he's like a star seed or star child. And so what they're setting people up is for like a pseudo false coming. So just as the aliens came and star seeded Jesus at his first coming to save the planet, quote unquote, according to them, uh, they're going to show up again as a kind of false second coming to save the planet once again. And it's one thing for them to say that, but the Vatican is actually promoting this. It's, it's insane. So you have a pseudo technology masquerading as the salvation of humanity in yeah. a way, and strange belief systems. Uh, there's another sign that you give and you talk about here in this DVD set, and that is a kind of a global upheaval. There's a restlessness. There is a, uh, a sort of a fear that sometimes you can't quite put your finger on it, but everybody seems to be just a little bit anxious about what they see going on these days. Yeah, well you certainly, that's what Jesus says. You know, the disciples of course come to him and says, you know, tell us, how do we know it's getting close? What's the sign of your coming? And he first says, you know, watch out that no one deceives you, right? And then he starts going on into the classic worldwide upheaval, if you will, signs. And he talks about wars and rumors of wars and nations rising against nations and turn on the news, what's going around the planet, right? And it's escalating on a massive scale. And then specifically with, you know, Ezekiel 38 and other passages, what's going to happen with Israel, the nations from the north and the uh, 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 Islamic nations surrounding Israel, that's all being put into play as we, we speak. Mm-hmm. So certainly wars and rumors of wars, people realize that something is horribly wrong and it's not getting better. Uh, but so as he talks about pestilence and, and boy is that on the news, right? Oh, Measles yes. going crazy. We got uh, the Ebola issue going on. You got, you got the technology, modern technology is actually fueling that pestilence to happen because now uh, for the first time in mankind's history with this technology we can bring those diseases across very quickly within just a matter of hours with plane flights and, and that's never been here before but it's here now and then you got earthquakes and the rise of earthquakes in Oklahoma Yes. Has had a couple. <laughs> We've yeah. had uh, like 2,000 earthquakes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, last year I think th- there were 1,500 earthquakes that were uh, right around 3.0 on, on the MMI scale. Yeah. Which is brand new for us. Yeah. Yeah. They're happening all the time. You know, uh, earthquakes in diverse places, yeah. said Jesus. Yeah. And well, wow. Here, yeah. here we are in Oklahoma. Well, and that's just it. And it's not just Oklahoma, it's other places like uh, uh, Alabama yeah. and Ohio. And you're like, you know, you know, and of course I joke in the study, I say it's because we all know that when we were growing up, our moms warned us. Whatever you do, don't move to Alabama because that's earthquake country. Right? It's like, what? And what are earthquakes doing in Alabama? But it's happening all over the world. And you're listening to Pastor Billy Crone. And I have to tell you, uh, right now he's relatively reserved. He's having a, a, a conversation. But when he gets up and starts to speak, he's on fire. And, and, and this DVD set, you know, he's talking about all these things in very concentrated form, backed up by visuals, statistics. And I must say, you're a great preacher. Uh, you, are, you have what it takes to stand up and just preach the Word. And that's what people get when they, when they watch you on DVD. So uh, congratulations on your style. I, I, I love it. Uh, right now I'm, I'm talking with you and you're just calm, relaxed. But when you get into that pulpit, yeah. things happen. And, I, I, and you, I believe that you are uh, moved by the Lord and the Spirit of the Lord when you stand up to speak. Yeah, well and that's definitely, uh, that's Him. That's for sure. He gets the glory and the credit for that because that's not my natural element. But uh, you know you had mentioned about yeah. uh, with the research and stuff, and one thing I'd like to stress is uh, especially for the skeptic, whether it be the skeptic in the church, unfortunately, that we're living in the last days, or a loved one who's a skeptic, yeah. a non-Christian, whatever. We provide so much, and boy it was a lot more work believe you me, but we provide so much video, visual evidence of what we're talking about with these signs. It's not just reading an article, not that that's bad, about here's what's going on with this prophecy sign. It's here's the actual news clip. It isn't just here's what they said at the UN, here's the actual video clip from the UN. It's not the president uh, made this statement, here's the actual a news report of the president making that statement. It's not just the, did you hear that news broadcast over here in BBC? It's the actual broadcast. And so uh, it's a lot more work, but we found it's much more effective mm-hmm. uh, providing this video visual evidence of the actual people making these actual statements around the countries around the world 
because a lot of people, even unfortunately in the church, but certainly the non-Christian skeptic, um, they've been trained to think that, well, that's just some spurious source. And you got that from wackyguy.org or something. Or, right. you, know, that's, you can't trust that document. No, when you see the actual news clip and the actual report, I'm not making this up. How, how do you discount that? Yeah. Ten signs that we're living in the last days uh, in this DVD set, and much more here than we can possibly cover today. But let's talk about apostasy. One of the ten signs of the last days that you talk about is the rise of apostasy. Yeah. Uh, apostasy, falling away from the faith. Yeah. Now, that would be uh, Bible believing Christians and Christian congregations mm-hmm. falling away from the faith. And, and you're seeing this, I take it. Mm-hmm. Well, we're seeing it, and again, in great massive detail. Uh, you know, Paul talks about how in the last days you're going to see people gather around themselves, teachers who will tickle their ears. Yeah. It says, he says there that they're going to turn away from the truth uh, and turn aside to uh, uh, myths, right? Well, when you talk about specifics, and again, this is happening as we speak. It's not coming, it's already being put into play, even with apostasy. Uh, when it tickle your ears, that's kinetho in the Greek, and it means only pleasant things. Mm. Uh, myths there is muthos, and it literally means stories made up. So how do you know you're living the last days? The, you're seeing the apostasy, right? Well, when you go to church services and all you hear is pleasant things and stories made up. I just described 95% of the American church. Mm is what's happening. That's how far the apostasy has gone. And you know, we all remember, and sometimes people laugh at the old fire and brimstone preacher, the hellfire and brimstone preacher. And, the, and we've come to the point now where a lot of people are saying, well there's no such thing as hell. Don't worry about it. And, uh, and we're here to uh, celebrate uh, Jesus and we have uh, lots of songs and we have good times and fellowships and potluck suppers and so forth. But as far as teaching actually preaching the gospel in church, that's, that's diminishing. Yeah, because you know what happens? If you start saying, you know what, you're a sinner and uh, you're in danger of going to hell, uh, and then of course you share the good news, well, but there's a solution. His name is Jesus Christ. God's merciful. He's made a way that we can be forgiven. But if you get to that first step, rightly so, and share the gospel, you're a sinner, hey, you know what, that hurts people's self-esteem. And you know what, they might get disgruntled. And you know what, they might leave. And we can't have that, you know. So because the new way in church has nothing to do with spiritual growth, which is what Jesus said, go out there and make disciples, okay? Discipline learners is what the word means. Uh, it's all about numbers, right? And you got to keep the numbers up because if you keep the numbers up, then you have bigger finances. And if you have bigger finances, then you have bigger buildings and all that stuff. And, and that's the focus today. And it's all a game. It's been created by the, what's called the church growth movement. And it's all a game to create an atmosphere where there's no conviction, There's no talk about hell. You don't hear the gospel because you don't want to offend anybody because the new successful church is one that's got a bunch of numbers. And if I stated uh, several times before, I said, well, excuse me? I mean, think about it. You're going to have to stand before God if you're a true born again pastor, right? You're called to teach and to prepare and to feed and protect the flock, okay? You got a congregation of 505,000. I don't care what the number is, but only five of them are saved. What in the world did you just accomplish? Mm. Are you trying to send people to hell? As crazy as that sounds, that's the American church today. It is indeed. Now, let's move to another uh, area and talk about this uh, idea of high-tech controlling mankind. Uh, You might call it the uh, budding of the Antichrist technology. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of uh, driving down the interstate or driving down a, uh, a freeway or even in downtown Oklahoma City and I look up and there's a camera and mm-hmm. there's another camera and I realize suddenly that I'm being watched by a bunch of cameras. Yeah. And then you have drones yeah. with cameras on them. And I'm not talking about expensive drones. Everybody's got one now. You can, mm-hmm. a couple of hundred dollars, you can buy a drone with a camera on it, learn how to fly it and and uh, check up on your neighbor's backyard. And, mm-hmm. I mean, it, the, the science of watching other people move around has risen to a level that is getting positively scary. Well, scary, and again, it's not coming. It's already here, already being put into place. That's what makes these times different. One of the drones, just one of the drones that we document, you talk about cameras and watching people, is a a drone that uh, is out there, it's called Argus, and people can check it out themselves. We share the actual video clip of the technology that people share and what it can do. 
This drone uh, uh, has a, at an altitude of 17,500 feet. Uh, it monitors whole cities at a whack. And I mean whole cities at a whack. And it's, com it's not pictures, it's video. It's high res video from 17,500 feet up. They can even see what's going on in the ground. Not only that, it's all being recorded to where they now have the ability with these drones watching whole cities all at a whack, they actually can type in like, hey, what was so-and-so doing three days ago? It's like a video search engine with these drones. We actually share the actual technology. Mm. They're, they're watching whole communities uh, as we speak. Um, and that's just from above. Google is big on this technology. Yeah. Google wants to be the mind of God, you know, is what they've stated. If one man controls something like this, wow. Uh, this would mean that if you didn't adhere and conform to what he wanted you to do, if he decided to get rid of you, he could do it. Absolutely. Well, the other thing that they're doing is they're combining this technology. They're starting to uh, get man out of the element of it. And they're turning to AI system, artificial intelligence systems, mm -hmm. to run these camera systems. One of the ones that we came across was the, the bombing incident in Boston. Mm -hmm. Okay, You know what the new uh, system that they decided to install in place? It's an AI system. It's a self-learning AI system that takes man out of the element of watching all these cameras yeah. that are all connected By out in way, society. AI, artificial intelligence. Yeah. You know what? There was something called the Turing test. And <clears throat> the, the original designer of the digital, uh, digital computer, Alan Turing, way, way back at the end of World War II, uh, sort of pioneered all this and he said, at some point in time, certainly not back then, but at some point in the future, he said, uh, there will be a computer on the other side of a wall and you'll be able to talk to it and you won't be able to tell whether you're talking to a computer or, or a human being. Yeah. That day has arrived. Mm -hmm. uh, recently, the Turing test has been demonstrated. They've had people actually talking to voices on the other side of the wall and the individuals were un unable to tell whether they were talking with a human being or a machine. Yeah. So we have true artificial intelligence mm -hmm. now. And believe me, in, in biblical context, that's a scary idea. It's not only scary, even the non-Christian bigwigs around the planet who are aware of this technology, they are saying within five years this could actually unfold to where we're going to eclipse. You know, some of the transhumanists and things that they want to use that technology also to upload their brains, and that's a whole other issue. And you know they originally were predicting 2045, and the number keeps coming down. But the AI specialists are saying that we are headed towards the event called singularity, where machines, just like in the Terminator movies, it's right. like Hollywood's preparing us for the future, yeah. is not make believe. It's not Hollywood. They're saying it could happen within just five years, and they're very, very concerned about it. Well, the Bible is right on target with all of this. It talked about the rise of knowledge in the latter days. Daniel spoke of of uh, many people traveling to and fro and knowledge increasing. Well, <clears throat> what he meant was knowledge would increase exponentially. It would explode. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing that. Yeah. Uh, ab and what, what else are we seeing? Well, we're seeing the economy right on the verge of crashing. Yeah. Somebody then must rush in and say, I can save the economy. Mm -hmm. And we know who he is. Yeah. Well, and <laughs> at the same time you're seeing the global economies come <clears throat> together uh, into, uh, you know, the scripture talks about this uh, tin horn kingdom. And you take a look at some of the geopolitical issues that are going on. Uh, our planet has already been split up, in, at least from the people behind this, uh, are, are already been split up into 10 different chunks. Uh, we actually exposed uh, uh, the report uh, from the UN's website and to where they said uh, that uh, they already have the planet into 10 chunks ruled by 10 rulers. And it's just like, man, you're taking a page out of the scripture. This is crazy. Um, but they're already seeing the planet already being split up and evolve, not 122, not 15, but exactly 10 chunks, uh, 10 kingdoms, if you will, ruled by 10 rulers. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a, it's a financial thing. And of course, we saw that with the European Union. It wasn't just a group of nations coming together to form a union. It was an economic union. And, but what, about, what are you going to do with those resistors? Well, you create a crisis, you manage the outcome, so if the economy starts going down, it's an excuse to, we've got we to survive this, we've got to somehow be a part of this. At the same time that's going on, uh, Gary, is we're seeing a major push towards going cashless. Uh, because we're going to have a one world economy, but it's going to be cashless because ultimately that cash, if you will, is going to be stored on 
uh, the right hand or the forehead with the Mark of the Beast system to, to control all the buying and the selling on the planet. And we are seeing for the first time in mankind's history not only individuals preferring cashless transactions on a massive scale, but we're seeing for the first time in mankind's history whole countries switching to cashless society. That's never been here before. Sweden is just one of those countries and they are almost, as we sit here, completely cashless. And at the same time, you know what they're pushing? A new hand payment system, we just exposed this, a new hand payment system using the right hand called Quickster. And you can now pay with your hand being scanned, your right hand. And at the same time, you know what the latest rage is over there? They're, call, they're having implant parties. And we share implant parties, right? Because the tattoo industry, the body piercing industry is now moving into stage three, okay? And the latest rage now is to get a new body implant and it's called a microchip. And that microchip not only stores your information, but you can make payments with it. All that's happening right now as we sit here. Well, tattoos are old hat. You can get yourself implanted now. Absolutely. Wow. Got to push the envelope. <laughs> and the DVD set is called The Final Countdown. Uh, we mentioned that uh, Billy talks about 10 reasons why we are living in the last days. This has got a lot more than 10 reasons in it. In fact, it's just backed by tons of uh, video backup, video data of all sorts to, to, exa to uh, uh, confirm the points that he's making from the pulpit. And I congratulate you on your, uh, uh, your clarity of thought. I've, I've watched a lot of this. And and you really do make the points so that they're very easy to understand. And, and I think we need to be aware of what's happening as Bible-believing Christians. And in fact, if you are a Bible-believing Christian, uh, you're, you're going to profit from uh, watching this DVD set because you're going to be able to go back and re read Scripture once again and, and it'll have a new clarity, a new focus for you. And you'll be able to talk to your friends, your family, and del deliver the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with a lot more power if you know what time it is. It's called The Final Countdown, Pastor Billy Crone. And Billy, we have less than a minute left. Going out today, what would you warn people to be watching for? Somebody who's out there saying, wow, what, what's the thing that I should be watching for with, with most fervency? Well, certainly I would say um, what you're seeing is going on uh, in the world today. Yeah. Uh, certainly with all the calamities, uh, this, uh, is, the world's getting worse and worse. We know it's going to happen. And, uh, but also you're seeing with the technology. And the technology to literally not only monitor mankind, but to unify uh, the payment system uh, into using biometrics, which is the term they use, which is conditions yeah. for the mark of the beast. All the technology and certainly the upheaval uh, this is exactly what the Scripture said would happen in the last days. Thank you so much for being with us. Billy Crone, I'm Gary Stearman. Keep watching everybody, we are. Thanks for joining us on Prophecy Watchers. You can find us on the web at prophecywatchers.com where you can sign up for our free email newsletter or follow us at facebook.com slash prophecywatchers. In the meantime, keep watching everybody and we'll see you soon.